when I was a child, I loved dancing a lot. Like, I have proof of a scarf here, <laughs> dancing with my brother in the living room, and just, you know, really express myself. But actually, having it in mind as a profession was, was not even a thought when I tried to do something with my life. So I started to think more about it actually after my studies. My first uh, audition for Ganduko, I remember very well. <laughs> because I was, first of all, so excited that they invited me because you had to have an invitation to do it. And I was also super excited because a friend of mine from Austria, Mikhail Turinsky, was invited himself as well. So we could come together and audition together, and um, which was quite nice to have with a familiar face there because you know, audition is just a, yeah, you want to have the job and there is competition going on and there is loads of pressure, not, not necessarily they put on you, but you put on yourself. But the experience of the first audition with, with Kanduku was in, really amazing in that sense, which I also, I think is the reason uh, just how Kanduku works is that all the variety of bodies and people you have in space, you can't compare one to one and like who who kicks their legs higher and who does the bigger leap or who is um, the strongest one in, in the group because it's not possible. We were also different and also diverse and that was the beauty of it. And so what they were really looking for was the uniqueness of you being a mover, you being a performer and a curious person in the task you've been given and how to solve those tasks and how you just approach all the, 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 yeah, all the actions you were supposed to do. Let's talk about this. Was my second, was it? yeah, my second um, piece I made with Kanduko. And um, I remember Hetsein Patel coming in at the research week already. We had to do all these writing tasks and all this, a lot of discussions about identity and disability and dance and Kanduko, who we are who every each of us is, and I loved it. <laughs> you know, that's what I did with my thesis and, and in my studies in Vienna. And I was just so, yes, I, I, I had a feeling I have a platform to talk it all out with Hetain and with the group and a very different way than um, through dancing. Hello. Hello. <laughs> It's much better, huh? Uh, hi, I'm Andrew, and we are Kanduko, and we are a professional repertoire company that incorporates disabled and non-disabled dance artists. And also we are female and non-female, and uh, gay and non-gay. And white and uh, non -white. Um, so, um, we are an almost um, fully inclusive dance company. It's quite personal stories we tell. So when we perform the piece, it's also connected to ourselves. And it's also a reminder of ourselves. And, and when we told the stories, for example, how we felt by telling the story and what it implies, and that's what makes a rich then in performance if you tell that story rather than just, you know, you learn a script, you have it in your head and you just speak it, but you enrich and you bring it to life by telling this story again and by having it as very personal and dear to me. It's at one side very much easier to connect with, but also quite challenging to find the approach to it in this 
very honest and vulnerable way because you present yourself, you give yourself away. Natonino um, was made by Thomas Howitt and it was my first piece I made with Kanduko. And I remember it being really physical and really um, challenging also to understand the exercises and the concept behind his ideas because you needed to understand a couple of things in order to make it possible in a physical way. So doing Notonino for me now since I started with Kandugo is just so, so dear to me because that's how I, um, how my professional life really started, making this piece with Thomas Howitt. And because it's an improvised piece, it's all. It's always different in every performance. You're never going to see a performance twice. The idea of having different bodies as a dancer, I found really thrilling. <laughs> it's like I can decide. I can decide if I want to dance with my one leg with my three legs or with a chair, with a wheelchair or whatever, which is, I think, yeah, really interesting, not just for me, but also for the choreographer. The, the piece we made with Alexander Whitley, Be Health, um, was really different in the sense that Alexander Wille came from a strong ballet background and he ha his signature uh, in dance and how he makes uh, choreographies was really different to everyone else and I remember he, each of us, each dancer, each, each dancer of us Kandukians um, had one half hour with him in the studio, so just Alex, Alex and me, for example. And then he tried, he wanted us just to move. He asked us questions and he wanted us to move um, towards these questions. And then he just looked at us and then he just said, he asked, oh, oh, that's interesting. And can you actually do that now? And can you try that now? <laughs> and, and suddenly you had like, a two minutes um, uh, choreography made on you by Alexandra Whitley and I was so fascinated because never ever anyone had choreographed on me and my body that specifically and and to at the same time feel his signature and his his body language and his aesthetics in his movements was just really exciting because Again, I just felt like he looked at me and what he was interested in, what I can offer. And in my case, I danced with my crutches. So he was really interested in the alignments of my crutches and the architecture they brought into space and the different speed and quality and having this, so to say, three legs with me. How can we play with rhythm, how can we develop that and I found it really exciting how he was just so curious about it, you know? I, I felt immediately, oh yeah, awesome, I've never moved like that before. Kanduko um, exists of disabled and non-disabled dancers is very crucial to how people think about disability, uh, I think. And that's why I also approached them to be part of, of um, what they do, because I felt very strongly that I want to do something to change people's perspective on disability. And for me, putting, you know, putting just myself 
and my physicality and my body on stage is so empowering because I can decide that I want you to look at me and I want you to see me and to really look at me whereas in everyday life people are shy to look and people are shy to ask but they are curious but they are really curious spiny jump backwards elbow through the rubber feeling a right lung stretch she folds the whole body onto one leg and ravels in a spiral the crutch like a backwards bazooka scanning 250 degrees twice simultaneously she plants right crutch left crutch right foot right left right left right five impacts her arm in opposition to the crutch i just want to explore this variety of um being an artist and being a dancer especially being a performer i love to perform and this space that opens up on stage or also um, we did a, a project uh, at the welcome collection where we've been in the galleries and in the museum for one friday spectacular so we were really close with the audience and they could come really close with the audience. And so the question for us occurred, okay, how can we sustain a performance mode where it's clear you're performing, but you're not like, you know, this kind of um, robot uh, walking through and you're not, you're not approachable because you want to approach the audience and engage with you. And that was a really interesting experience for me to uh, understand um, how I can play with it and how um, I need people to play with it, you know. And I think also going back to science and the disability studies or social and anthropology, social and cultural anthropolo anthropology ideas of. Uh, what the body is, what dance is, what culture is, I think is something I'm really interested in as well to bring um, the, the science world into dance as well, connect the disability studies into, into the physical understanding of a disabled body. And there are, need to be done much more studies around what a cultural model of disability can be. And I think dance is a brilliant way <laughs> to look into and understand more of it in a physical way, in a, in a social cultural way, in a very political way, and in a very individual way as well. So I think it's definitely something I want to go towards to as an artist as well. <laughs>